Hello everybody, hope you're well. You're joining me on the roof of my shed and this is an update video to the EcoFlow stream system. And if you haven't seen the first one while well, I got this, unboxed it and put it all together, I'll put the link up here for you now. But this is a few days into having it and I'll give you an update how it's performing and how, it, how it's all working. The first thing we need to point out, because I've had a lot of comments about this, is that there's not a lot of solar here. And uh, there are also quite a few bed marks on that. We need some rain, believe it or not. So each one of these panels is 450 watts. So realistically, there's two facing south and there's two facing north. And the south panels produce the most power because that's where the best access to the sun is at the highest point of the day. So maximum we're going to get out of this is probably 1600 watts maybe just over a thousand watts and we do live in north yorkshire and don't let this weather make you think it's always like this there's a few clouds around but we've had some very cloudy and rainy days recently so you are limited to the amount of power you'll get into the system because the amount of power you can get from the solar panels and this is the maximum amount of power that system will actually take. I had to extend the cable slightly just by putting some extension cables on and I drilled through here and then filled it full of sealant. So this is actually running on my shed at the end of the garden which is about nearly 100 metres away from the house. I have done much more from the install. I was going to fit them up on the wall so they was out of the way but they're still sat on the workbench next to each other just working away and I really haven't done anything else I've just installed it and used it the only thing I had a problem with is because it's so far away from our house to get all the data and everything from these it needs an internet connection and because we're so far away from the router in the house the internet kept dropping out so I brought the router out the camper van and link that to both of the units so I can get some updated data. So we, we kept losing data and information but it was purely because of the internet signal and we do live in middle of nowhere and the internet si signals pretty poor. So this is producing power off the solar charging these two batteries up as like reservoirs and then it'll produce power from this up to about 800 watts into the cottage to use for the consumer units and everything else we're running in the house. But what you need to remember about these is like these are the reservoirs you can buy more of these and stack them up as batteries i've just got the two so it charges these up over the day as well as supplying power to the cottage and then overnight when there's no sun you use the power from this up to 800 watts into the system these are quiet there's no fans or anything on them and they get warm but they certainly don't get hot and this shed does get hot so I've had no problems with them getting too hot. They are almost completely silent. You can hear a relay every so often switching on and off and that must be the relay to supply power to the cottage or to charge the batteries up. Now on the back of these, you do have these main sockets which you can switch on and off with a switch or you can switch it off from, on and off from the app. And with this being linked to the internet, I can do that anywhere I have a signal. So I can be away on holiday and still switch these power units on and off or the sockets on and off and monitor all the information that's happening and what you tend to do is when I've been away from the house I've been having a look at the solar to see how sunny it is but these on here are useful because this just takes the power out of these units so I plug a lead into this which runs back down to the end of the garden it's an armoured cable and I can charge my um, hybrid car from these so the solar comes in charges these up and then puts the power from this and I can have these completely disconnected from the mains and over a period of time as the solar builds up and it charges the batteries it'll charge the car so we don't use the car every day it's a hybrid car and our hybrid car probably does about 20 odd miles on electric and that's a round trip to the shops and back for us so we're not in a rush to charge it and given time these will charge it for free off solar so we're back in the cottage now this beast here it's a 35 year old Arga which is like the heart of the cottage and um, it was gas and we've had it converted to electric and that probably takes about 2000 plus watts constantly now 
That's absolutely fantastic in a winter, but in a summer it just gets too hot in here, so we don't use it. So there's an advantage to save power there for us because we refer to that small oven now, which is also an oven and an air fryer, and I'll show you that in a bit. But this, we don't want to get rid of this, and in a winter, the um, EcoFlow stream system, if there's any sun through the colder months, um, autumn, winter, um, we'll still get the, a bit of power to contribute to the system to help prop this up and any other power we use in the cottage. But this is just too far too hot to use in a summer. Um, but it does heat most of the house and Joe absolutely loves it. So there's a good saving for us for about six months of the year almost that we don't have this switched on, which brings our consumption down in the cottage really though. Also, it changes your mentality when you start to look at solar and efficiencies in your cottage, or it has for us. So just a domestic kettle like that, that uses over 2,000 watts just to boil for a cup of tea. But in our camper van, we're always thinking of how we can reduce the amount of power consumption. So this little kettle here is 600 watts. So we can improve our efficiency using that stream system and using solar. That would power this no problem whatsoever. So you can actually get a free cup of tea from the sun using that system rather than using domestic appliances. Likewise, we're using the toaster out of the camper van instead of the big domestic one we've got. But this is the new oven we've got. And we're that impressed with this. It's not sponsored in any way we purchased this and we've just ordered another one to put in the camper van. So this on full power, it runs just over 1200 watts, 1200 watts plus around there. But this is an oven, it's a grill, it's an air fryer, and you can bake things in it. And it's that small. So as I say, that's a fantastic efficiency saving for the cottage, but we've actually bought another one to use in the camper van because it's that good. And we can get rid of some of the other appliances in the camper van to use this. If anything, this stream system and installing this stream system really makes you think more than we used to think how efficient we can be with our power and how much we can harvest from the sun from such an easy setup without having to have all the problems of having it fitted into the cottage and solar panels on the roof and the planning permission and we've got this cottage is nearly 200 years old and we've got a slate roof and nightmare that system to plug in to run this and contribute to what we've got in is a really good efficient way of doing it for the price so if you've seen my channel before we have an off-grid switch so this is mains power and this is off grid and there's a cable that comes out of this into the main fuse box enables you to use an off-grid power system through the fuse box. And that switch is over and at the other end over here we've got an eco unit here that we can switch on and it'll take all the power out of this and put it into the cottage to use our electrical equipment as we would if it was on grid. We just have to be careful that we don't have, try to overload that and if we do it just switches it off, reset itself and it goes again. That was our off-grid um, system for backup. But with the new stream system, we don't have to do that because if the stream system loses power and there's power in the power banks, it'll use that power to run the cottage. You just have to be careful to keep the wattage down as much as possible. So we'd probably switch the agar off if it was in winter. So looking at this app, I've switched it off from the grid for the fuse box. So the power now is going into the batteries, charging the batteries up and then supplying some of that power back in the, into the cottage. Now many systems that you have fitted onto your house, if you get a power cut due to the way it's set up, you can't actually use those as backup power. It manages itself as a system, so these are the two batteries. So this one's currently got 24% um, percent charge, and that one's got 70. And uh, it's half past 10 in the morning, and that's how much power is available in that battery. And that's how much power is available in that battery. And on here, this particular one is the one which has the solar inputs. This is the um, Stream Ultra. And you can see what power is coming for each of the solar panels and the total power. And then what power is going to the grid. There are limitations and in the app it tells you within your country how much power you're allowed to take from this and put into your household system. So in the UK it's 800 watts. So contribute a maximum of 800 watts to this. As it is now, it's just clicked up to 800, dropped down a little bit, and it will vary that. And the system manages itself to give as much power to the grid as it can to contribute to your other systems in the cottage. 
but it also calculates how much you can put into your batteries as well. So during the day, we're probably not using a lot of wattage at the moment. Fridges are on or off, the lights are on and off, um, charging a laptop, and that's about it really. So the consumption in the cottage is quite low, but that manages it all itself through the system. And then here, we can switch the two sockets on this unit, and on the other unit, we can do the same from the remote control. So if you wanted security lights or charge your car or whatever you want to do, you can plug it into the sockets on the back of the unit and then switch it on remotely anywhere you have a signal, as long as you have the units connected to the internet. Also on the app, <laughs> when you first install this, you check it at every five minutes. It gives you an indication of how efficient the panels are by the day, by the week, by the month. And it shows you how much comes in from solar, how much battery you've used, and it gives you a wave format per day to show you how much has gone into each one. And then down here, I don't know if you can see it on here, it also shows you how much has come from each panel. Also on the app, it shows you how much power has been produced. And it gives you an estimate for your location as well, compared to the average in the region. And that does it day, weekly, monthly, yearly, as most of these settings do. This is the interesting one though because this gives an indication of how much power we've contributed to the cottage from the actual system. So, so far, even though it's been on and off because of the issues I had with the internet, nothing to do with the system purely the way I've set it up and now that's resolved, we're getting about 24, nearly 25%, so that's a quarter of our power consumption supplied by the EcoFlow stream system. And it gives you the calculations down up here, how much is used, how much you're using, and where the actual power comes from. Now, obviously, if you're in a sunny area, you might get more power. And uh, it's been off and on for us. The, the weather's been changing all the time. I can also show you your charge and discharge rates as well. And it does those over a period of time. So this is an interesting one. Since we've been using this, we've saved 17.67 kilograms of CO2 and we could have driven the we've saved the equivalent of driving 73.8 kilograms so i think it's a good indication that you're doing something for the environment from this very small simple system and in the system for the main screen there's lots of different settings and there's also settings for each of the um, power banks as well and there's some recommendations in there about charge and discharge rates to lengthen the battery but you can extend them if you've got a particular time where you need some additional power you can set those higher it's a really good app there was a software update as soon as i plugged it in but that's the only thing i've had to do as part of it this is your main screen and it shows you how much power is coming in so here's the solar which is fluctuating as the clouds go over this is what's charging and discharging and that changes so it's discharging at the moment that's what it's set to and there's a preset in the app for that so in the uk it's 800 watts in other countries it's different and i think these are really popular in germany somebody told me it might be in a comment that has a lot of people using these in germany and you can just plug and play in germany you don't have to wire it into the system and it just manages itself i tend to forget about it now it's just there running away doing its job But it's good to look that uh, even in North Yorkshire, what's supposed to be summer, <laughs> using um, appliances in the cottage and charging our car is still contribution a, a significant proportion, almost quarter of our consumption. Now, in a winter, that will obviously be different, but that's going to have an impact over time. So now it's charging the batteries. It's discharged, so probably the fridge freezers have switched off in the house or something. And now it's charging the batteries. Now it's discharging the batteries and putting it back to the cottage. And it fluctuates from that. It manages itself to know when to put power into the batteries to keep them topped up as much as they can. And when best to contribute to the cottage system. Another question and some comments I've got is... Um... Do you have to have it fitted on your shared? Is there any other brackets? Now, EcoFlow do lots of different systems. So you can buy one battery, you can buy two batteries, you can buy a number of different batteries. So you can have the main control unit, the Ultra, and then the other batteries to back it up, and you can concertina those. Um, solar, maximum solar for that unit is what we have on this screen, uh, on our setup there, and that comes to the kit. So the kit we got was roof mounted, four solar panels, 
the ultra and the backup battery that went to it and that was the kit we've got and i think they were retailing now for about 1800 quid somewhere around that but check the description it might be different now they also do another stream system and this caused me some confusion as well and the other stream system is it's a unit that you fasten to your solar panels and you can either buy it independently or you can you can buy it with solar panels from ecoflow and that stream system goes straight into your household system so it bypasses any batteries so if it produces solar it goes through this unit which is like a mini inverter all the links for this will be down below and it puts the power straight in so it doesn't have a reservoir it doesn't have the reservoir potential of what this system has it just basically harvests the power from the sun through your solar puts it through this inverter unit and straight into your system so as it's sunny you're getting power if the sun goes out you don't get that additional power and of course that can't be used as a backup system because there's no reserve so there is that system and this is designed it's not a full house solar system it's never going to full out anybody's full cottage you know, unless you've got completely eco-friendly kit and use less than 800 watts and at once and um, you've got brilliant sun all day <laughs> Now there probably are places in the world you can do that, but this is just like a contribution, a inexpensive, easy to install system that can contribute to supply you power. And I think the way we've got it set up works really well for us, but people may do it differently. And EcoFlow offers different packages, I say, but also different mountings. So we got the mountings for the roof, so we can put it on the shed. You can actually get freestanding ones, you can get them for, that fit on balconies and you can get one that's on a tracker. So if you've got some land where you can fit a tracker, you can actually place the solar panels on a tracker and this will move around with the sun and get the maximum sun um, as it follows the sun around. So there's lots more information and there's lots more questions that people will ask. What I would say is I've told you as much as I know and what I can tell you at the point. At this point, we've used it for quite a few days now and we just forget about it. We forget it's there. It's at the end of the shed. It's putting power in this. Every so often I look at the app and I say, oh, you said this, this amount of power today. We've produced this amount of solar. And you can just forget about it. It just runs away as it does. They've got a very long guarantee on this as well, which is good to see. Um, is it for everybody? Don't really know. You need to check your circumstances. Is it an alternative to having a full system in your cottage? No, it's a contributor. So if you're going in a modern house or you're in an area where it's easy to install solar, you could cover your roof in solar, you could have solar in the garden and you could put those into massive batteries in your house and link it to the grid and sell it. Excess power off, as many people do, to the electric companies. You can, if you have the right meter, take some excess power from this and sell it back to the grid. And there is a function on there to monitor that on the actual app. But we don't do that. We're not going to have enough power to do that. And I don't want to be messing about changing the meter and everything we have in our cottage. So am I impressed? I'm still impressed. When I installed this, I was so excited to do it. And I was amazed at how it actually manages the power. And that still amazes me. How that unit can understand when to put power into the batteries when it needs power to the grid, when it can reduce power from the grid and put it somewhere else. And all that to be automatic is just fantastic. That just leaves me to say thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.